Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling General Linear Models Design of Experiments. And here we're doing a little mini-series on balanced and complete block designs. And this video is part one of eight, and we're going to deal with just general model development. So, in an incomplete block design, there's A treatments and B blocks, and each treatment is replicated R times. Now, this design is similar to a randomized block design, except not all treatments are observed within a block. Only K treatments are observed within a block. Now, K is strictly less than A. In a randomized or completely randomized block design, all A treatments are within one block, but here there's only K. Now, the word balance means we have as many blocks with equal number of treatment pairs. So treatment one occurs in a block with, you know, or treatment one occurs with, say, treatment two, the same number of times. Treatment three occurs with treatment four, or treatment one and treatment three. They all sort of pair up equally. Now, the total number of observations is, I actually think of this one the easiest. There's B blocks. There's K observations within each block. So B times K total observations. You can also think of it as there's A treatments and each is replicated R times. So that's the same number. Or we can just generally call it capital N. Now the model in scalar form we let it equal Y I J equal to mu plus tau I plus beta J plus epsilon I J. Now I goes from 1 to A there's A treatments, and J goes from 1 to B, because there's B blocks, but this notation, not quite correct, okay, and here's why. So, for instance, treatment 1 will occur in blocks 1, 2, and 4, so you can't let J cycle to 3 when I is 1, and so when you just, when there's no constraints or restrictions, then you, it's too much because we get observations that don't exist or are missing. And so what we do is we introduce uh, a new notation. And there's two common ways for this to happen. I like the first one a little bit better than the second one. So I equals 1 to A, but J equals BI. And where BI is a set of block indices where treatment I occurs. So for instance, I equals 1, <clears throat> J is equal to BI, and BI is the set, say, 1, 2, 4, because treatment 1 doesn't occur in block 3. It occurs in 1, 2, and 4. Now, the other one is we cycle J. So J equals 1 to B, and I equals TJ, where TJ is a set of treatment indices that occur in block J. So, for instance, in the first block, so J equals 1, we have uh, treat, I is equal to TJ, so T1, that, and the treatment assignments in block 1 could be 1, 3, 4, for instance. And, and that's the way we would cycle through all of these. Now, this double notation is, well, let me wait till we get to the next page. So, YIJ is equal to the I observation in the jth block, mu is the overall mean, <coughs> tau i is the ith treatment effect, beta j is the jth block effect, eij is the or id random variables normally distributed mean zero constant variance sigma squared. Now in matrix notation we can represent all this with y equal to x beta plus epsilon. And we're going to go into much, much more detail on the second page here. But the note is this beta vector is broken up into the mu. So there's a mu. Oop, let's see if we can flash this. So there's a mu. And there, this is a vector of tau. So tau 1 through tau a. This is a vector of beta. So beta 1 through beta b. <clears throat> and then when you do this multiplication, you get different column spaces associated with each. So there's a column of 1's associated with mu, 
X tau, X beta, and each of those are associated with the treatments and the blocks. Of course, the epsilon. But if you're to do this multiplication, it's also commonly written like this mu times 1, X tau times tau, X beta times beta plus epsilon. And where epsilon is multivariate normal with mean vector 0 and variance covariance matrix sigma squared i. Now, here's an example that that we'll use in a few of the vid upcoming videos. Now, and actually this is a, uh, an example taken from Montgomery, I think his third edition in uh, design and analysis of his experiments. And so here we have treatment one, two, and three, and we have four blocks, but not all treatments can occur within a block. So here there's a block size of three, so K equals three. But treatment one is in block one, two, and four, and this in the same. But notice here though that um, so it we're going to look within a block. So treatment one uh, it is paired with say treatment three. So there's one occurrence. Treatment one is paired with treatment three in block two. And, and not again. But if we look at all other pairs, it should be 2 also. So 3 and 4, 3 and 4, and, and so they each, they're paired twice. Okay, but here's the notation. So I equals 1 to 4, J equals beta I. So let's just do I equal 1. So that means we're treatment 1, B I. So the block, um, the block indices for treatment I. So notice treatment I, treatment 1, we're doing with I equals 1, is 1, 2, and 4, and that's what's here. Now we go to I equals 2, and then J equals block, you know, B2, and treatment 2 occurs in 2, 3, and 4, so B2 is 2, 3, and 4, and similarly for B3 and B4. Now this is the other notation where and instead of thinking about it like this, we think about it like this, right? So J equals 1, so we're in, we're in block 1. I equals TJ. So it's the treatment assignments in block 1, since J equals 1 in this example. So it's 1, 3, 4. 1, 3, 4. Now J equals 2. I equals T2. So the treatment assignments are 1, 2, and 3, 1, 2, and 3, and then similar for 3 and 4. Now, the notation here, the, the way we set it up in matrix notation, the Y vector is, is just a column of the response, but it goes in order. So it's treatment 1, and then treatment 2. I, and I put the little dash there to indicate this is all treatment one, treatment two, right? And then treatment three and treatment four. Now the beta vector, of course, is mu tau one through tau four, beta one through beta four. And, and when we multiply this over, we have a column space associated with mu, the tau's and the betas. But we also have to remember where they belong. And you can kind of think about I have the double index notation over here. So this first observation is treatment one, block one. 74, the second observation is treatment one, block two. 71 is treatment one, block four. And then so on down. Now, the epsilons, the double index notation, so it's epsilon one, one, right? Treatment one, block one. Treatment 1, block 2, treatment 1, block 4. You see the double notation. Now, it's what's called over-indexed, right? We don't need two indexes, technically. You know, we could, we could just remember, we could call this Y1, Y2, Y3, Y4, Y5, Y6, Y7, and then we just remember where they fall in here. And, and that would work. But to develop this rich theory, we have to use this double notation. And so we're going to we're going to sum over this double notation. So the first observation, this is y11. 
Y12, Y14, Y22, Y23, Y24. Okay, and I'm kind of introducing it here, and you might think it's overkill, but when we get in later videos, you're going to appreciate that I went a little bit slow and, and tried to emphasize the importance of this double notation. Um, now, like I said, e the column space of X can be broken up into the column of ones, X tau and beta tau, and those associated with the treatment effects, the block effects, and the beta vector can be kind of partitioned into three components too, mu, tau, and beta. These are vectors. Now, earlier I pointed out the, like how many pairs things occur and there's and there's a symbol for that we call it lambda and and to me it's actually a horrible notation because lambda is used in contrast later in the in this series but almost all the books call it lambda and so lambda represents how many times treatment i appears with treatment j in the same block and earlier in this example we said that they occurred twice so lambda is two in this example right okay but this is the formula for it and to me it's hard to understand so I it's easier for me to think about it like this that each treatment occurs r times and there's k other observations and so that we get a number but that should equal uh, some number times the other a minus one treatments you know this is this is dealing with one treatment that's replicated r times and this is one of those things i always have to pause the video or you know dog ear the book and slow down get some scratch paper and really think about this because it, to me it's not intuitive um but but it is what it is and so in our example there's a equals four four treatments b equals four four blocks each treatment is replicated three times. K is the number of observations within a block. And lambda is the number of uh, treatment pairs, which is two in our example. Okay, well, that's all I have for this example or this uh, video. And the next video, part two, is going to be on the column spaces of the design matrix, which we're going to start looking at these different, different, column spaces well i hope you enjoyed it i sure did please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye